Hey, welcome back to Team Axis Stands. Uh, now we've got the K24 in, um, it's time to start looking at the wiring. So today, that's what we'll be doing. So this is actually the Accord Euro Loom, and I reckon you could modify this to make it work. However, it's probably a bit more effort. And the reason is, is on the ECU side, um, you've got no C101 plug. Uh, you've got this odd looking plug here instead. So you'd have to de-pin all that and put it into the C101. Um, and you also have your drive-by-wire um, controller connector as well. So that's why I didn't go with this one. It would have been easier because it's probably laid out a bit better. Um, but yeah, I've gone with the CRB one instead. Uh, it's also got the same connector to the um, drop-by wire bit. So for this engine, um, what I've done is I've modified a CRV loom. Um, this is an 05 or 06 CRV loom. Uh, and what I've just done is taken off the... So, yeah, I should explain. We're going to replace this with a cable-driven throttle body. So this is a drive-by wire on all of the Accord Euros. So what I've done is just depinned the connector um, and there's six wires um, that you, you, you can use and they all go, I think all of them go back into the, um, it, basically the ECU plugs. Um, and what we needed to do was just wire in a uh, TPS, because this doesn't have a TPS, so I've taken one of those plugs and repinned it and put it into the TPS pin. Um, and then the other one is for the idle air control valve, I think. Uh, so I've done that one too, I've repinned that. So I now have the two wires and I'm just waiting for my throttle body to come to arrive. Um, but I've got the connectors ready to go down here and I'll be working out the right wire length and then uh, putting those in. Um, D-pinning is a little bit of an art. So on the ECU connectors they have this little tab here that you need to slightly lift up. I don't know if you can see that. Um, you just get something and lever, uh, lever it up. You need to do that before you remove the wires. Um, and then you just get something sharp. Like, you know, like this. this. Um, and you go into this side. And you push it until you feel a little tab. And then you just lift up and then you can pull the wire out. I can't do it one-handed, but yeah, basically that's that's what you need to do. One of the most useful ways of using a multimeter, and people are a bit scared of these, but they're easy, um, is to use this resistance mode. And this is great for tracing for tracing wires. So you, know, I can, you can use any really resistance because there shouldn't be any because it's connected wire. But you just uh, set it on that and then um, you can pick your wires I'll try and find one to give you a good example. Um, so we've got like this red and blue wire here. Um, and say we suspect that the red and blue wire down here is also the other end of it. So we just put one... Sorry, I'll show you in a sec. It's a bit hard with one hand. Well, you, you connect basically connect one side to there. Um, and the other end to the other side of it. And this will actually show zero, like zero resistance across it. Um, and that means that there's continuity between um, the two sets of wires. So I've been doing that for all of them. And it saves ripping apart all the loom to work out, to work out, uh, you know, if they're connected or not. Um, so that's my last wire that I need to connect in, um, which I'll be doing now. So before I start moving into the wiring on the new um, K series, I just thought it would be interesting to show you uh, how this works. It's a Carby, this is a Carby car, 1994 or 95 I think. Um, the weird bit is the Carby is computer controlled. So I don't know if you can see some of the bits that I took off. Um, this is full of like solenoids and electronics. Uh, runs a TPS sensor. Um, kind of weird. It's almost more complicated than running a simple EFI. Um, so took all this out and then actually inside the car uh, we had uh, we actually had an ECU so it's run it's Carby, Carby ECU um, 
with just two plugs. I think most of them are three or four plugs. Um, so a bit weird there. Um, but the good thing is those plugs uh, should have the wires that we need um, to, to, to get the K24 working. Uh, so let's have a look at the conversion harness and stuff. So I just bought a cheap generic um, EG Civic harness. Um, and I'll run you through the wires that actually need to be plugged in. So you have a temp sensor wire. So I've gone through and labelled all these. They were not labelled and it was a mess. Um, <clears throat> that's a temp sensor. So that goes to the temp sensor on the engine, your B or D series temp sensor. So that's that one. There's a charge light and that goes into um, one of the ECU pins. I'll show you which pin that is. There's a mill, which is, I think, uh, uh, sorry, there's a mill and, which is the check engine light. There's ELD, which is some load um, detection um, circuit, I think for alternator. Um, and then what I've done is I've rerouted another one back here, which is for the fuel pump relay. So this one's for the fuel pump relay. Um, these harnesses are all made for left-hand drive cars, so probably you won't need to extend or muck around with wires if you've got a left-hand drive. For us right-hand drive people, um, things are swapped around. Uh, we've got our fuel pump relay on this side, but our ECU on that side, so it's a bit different. Um, and then there's one more wire which I've already kind of routed in the right direction which is this wire um, and that's for the fan uh, that sorry the fan switch so what I've got is I've got some of these um, I'm gonna put the switch in here but basically that controls when the fan comes on or off um, so that will run back down and then uh, obviously trigger the fan relay uh, and that's basically it. those are whatever it was six wires uh, all you need to connect up um, other than the plugs which just plug in so it's really basic um, it's just working out which wires which is the tricky bit so I'll run you through that now alrighty so um, this is where the ECU sits in this car and I'll be on the opposite side for left hand drive cars but I've seen them and they all come with the same kind of plastic sheath with plugs. Now unfortunately my car is a carby car so this will be different for most of you but the same kind of rough idea. Uh, what you want out of these plugs and there'll be three for an EFI car is you want three wires out of there. There'll be one which is green and yellow which is the fuel pump wire um, and that will sit in the A plug in either A7 or A8. Now, because this is a carby car, I don't have that and I've run my wire across and I'm triggering the relay off that, but just keep that in mind. Uh, the second one that we want is uh, green and orange for the check engine light. This will be in A15 usually, um, but in mine it is here on this plug. So I'm going to pull that one out and that one's going to be attached to my uh, mill, my check engine light. Those two. Um, for, we then have another one which is the uh, green and red which is the load, uh, load, load detection um, and that's the green and red um, and that'll go to the ELD wire um, there's then just one more wire which is the charge wire which will go into the A plug I don't know if you can see that there's a white with blue in I think it's B10 is this B or A? I can't remember um, it goes into that one uh, B10 sorry B10 um, and it's that wire there and what you want to do is this one you don't want to cut it you just want to, I'm going to strip back a bit of it and um, uh, solder it up to it so it's attached to it. Um, I've seen people use scotch locks, I don't really like scotch locks so 
I'll be doing it that way. Um, but what I'm going to do first is, because I'm not sure of my pins, I'm going to unplug the pin and pull the pin out and see if I can test at least the um, engine light and see if I can get it to come on in the dash before I, I go cutting it. Um, seen other people amusingly comment on other people's videos saying, "Oh, don't cut your, you don't cut your plugs. You know what happens if you want to go back to a D series again? I think you got bigger problems than the wiring. If you want to go back to D series, if we have cut off a whole engine mount, and to be honest, who wants to go back to a D series once you've gone K series? I'm pretty sure you're going to stay K series. So yeah, don't worry about me mangling this." There's plenty more D-Series ones for the D-Series guys. Alright, let's get to it. Alright, so what I've done is I've stripped back a bit of the um, white and blue one. And I'm just going to wrap and solder that one onto it. And then make sure it's taped up properly. Uh, and that'll do for the charge light. And then I'll move on to the other couple of wires which I've now pulled out here. We'll just attach those up. Pretty easy actually. builders and, that's, and it seems to be pretty good port of view so far they got slightly different uh, tape for the interior um, obviously the interior doesn't need to be waterproof um, whereas the so it's more fluffy um, whereas the uh, under the engine bay stuff was um, oh, I'm making a mess of this was uh, a bit of a different texture so that'll do for that that's a wrap for this video if you liked it give it a like give it a subscribe Give us a subscribe if you're not subscribed already um, and join us for the next episode. We're getting closer to starting this thing up.